Brad, Tier 2 for Warriors, coming at you with another video. This is the TBI Toolkit video. I didn't realize that I never made one of these. I kind of thought that I had made something clear and concise and was mistaken. <laughs> so I kind of evaluated things. Okay, well, I need to actually make something that's clear and defined. Okay, this is what you do. So here's what you do. You got a TBI. Now, this is not cranium injury, that's another thing. So that's has a whole different set of things. Um, TBI without cranial injury, immediate ketamine use. And if you've been a TBI patient, you need a card on you, or you need a, uh, a living will, or you need like another documentation at, at the ER of your current doctor that says, in the event of another TBI, use ketamine in like bold letters. Um, here is a study, ketamine in acute, an acute phase of severe traumatic brain injury and old drug for new uses by Daniel Austin Gotti. I don't know if this guy, is, he must be like a researcher and not a doc. Usually it says doctor in front of that. Um, maintaining an adequate level of sedation and analgesia plays a key role in management of TBI. Current evidence shows that ketamine does not increase but may decrease intracranial pressure and its safety profile makes it a reliable tool for pre-hospital environment. In this point of view, we discuss the different aspects and use of ketamine in the acute phase of TBI. Basically, TBI is our premier, top level, there's nothing else better drug. It disrupts the cytokines. It disrupts ILA-2, ILA-6, tumor necrosis factor alpha. The doctors know that, they're not educated, disregard their opinion. Because this, this drug is the only drug that does that. Um, and, and releases cranial pressure and then reduces the overall inflammatory process and then stops that at its core and allows you to then do other things. And this process needs to be done, whether in the inpatient or outpatient process, within five, um, four hours of an injury, ideally is what, they, what the NIH says. And then to do this um, with five infusions over the course of a few days to then reach a steady concentration. I'm not sure what the number is. It might be five grams, but there, there's a dose amount, and that amount of dose then equals the amount of an inflammation response to lower the inflammation. Whole idea is lower inflammation. Stop the inflammation process using ketamine because it's the premier drug to do that. And if you can, micronized progesterone um, added as well into the IV. And at the end of the IV, then use vitamin C to then stop the process of, I would assume it's oxidation because the idea is you're pr promoting anti antioxidants with vitamin C because it stops the, the, the formal process where you want to just stop the process of what you're doing to then give the body back its um, homeostasis. So that's, the, that's the idea of this and that's what the top experts are saying to do. So you've added ketamine, you've added your progesterone, you add magnesium into the IV bag, you add alpha lipoic acid, magnesium, ALA, and This is when we would add 15 grams of fish oil um, multiple times during that um, acute phase. And then after that to the post-injury post phase. And the post-injury phase, we still want to be doing ketamine infusions because it's still going to stop our inflammation process. Um, in this time, we need to be collecting labs as well. So free testosterone, total testosterone, the whole hormone panel, the full hormone panel, not just the, not just the big stuff, but the smaller stuff, so the free testosterone, the free T3, the free T4, not just TSH, TSH is a signal, it is not the active hormones, we want the active hormones, so free T3, free T4. We want a complete metabolic panel, we want a complete blood panel, we want, a, want the whole thing, and we want a full cytokine panel, we want the full inflammation process. We don't just want one and two, we want the whole thing. So ILA-2, ILA-6, the whole cytokines, and if you can get access to an assay to do this, tumor necrosis factor alpha. That's a little bit more 
intricate and docs may not know how to do it or who to send it to. You may have to send it to Mayo or you may have to send it to um, Access Laboratories or somebody like that, but they'll, they'll get it. They'll be able to, to get that done. Um, you get those, those panels run. You also want your oral cortisol test. I'm not 100% if you can do blood. My understanding is that's oral is the one that you want, which is a morning, noon, and night. Then our first uh, first week, if you're cognitively active and you're okay, let's say two weeks goes by, we want a glucagon challenge test to be done. We don't want insulin challenge tests because that can produce seizures. So we want an insulin or we want a glucagon simulation test to give us the active growth hormone panel. We want active growth hormone. We don't want IGF-1. We don't care what the IGF-1 says because the IGF-1 in a TBI patient is neutral. It doesn't mean anything. It's a, it's a signal. It's a mimic. It's not the active hormone. We want the active hormone. So we do a glucagon simulation test. It's going to give us our actual growth hormone. If it's low, medium, not existent, what do we do? We replace it. We want all hormones at this point to be optimized, not normal. I don't care if you're a thousand nanogram per deciliter testosterone you're a man. If your free testosterone is under 3%, that means your percentage is closer to heart attack and stroke. What do we want to do? Stop heart attacks and strokes. So how do we do that? We raise testosterone up to the 30 to 60 NGDL, 3 to 6% range of circulating free testosterone that's going to give us what we want. There's a bunch of this fancy science on glial cells and fancy tumor necrosis factor alpha science, all this stuff that Dr. Mark Gordon talks about. It is good. It's true. I'm not getting into it. It's too complex for me. All I know is testosterone stops these processes. It stops the catabolic process because it's an anti-catabolic medication. So you want to add anti-catabolic medications, testosterone, pregnenolone, um, growth hormone, thyroid if we need it, um, and women, progesterone and estradiol and those sort of things. We want to add the whole hormone panel, optimize it, make it good, make it perfect. Optimize. Not normal, not somewhat okay, not neutral, no, optimal. Anybody says the lab is normal, fire them because they don't understand what they're doing. TBI, we want to focus on optimization. Then after we've done all of our hormones, we've optimized those things, then we want to start adding daily magnesium, zinc, fish oil. Um, we also want to start getting into the peptides as well. So, you know, we have these immune system peptides that work on the thymus. So thymus and alpha-1, Zadaxin is the, the branded name um, for the drug. Um, there's also TB500 and BPC157. These are anti-inflammatory, anti anti-cell um, anti death medications. And if you look in this whole thing, you'll see apoptosis in all of these documents that talk about TBI. So there's not a uh, anti there's not an anti lithium process. There's an anti apoptosis uh, process. What do we do? Right? We want to stop cell death. That's the whole point of our process. So um, we want to add these these uh, amino peptide medications. Um, these need to be done by a compounding pharmacy. You don't go online and just buy them. They have to be done by a compounding pharmacy. You know that they're safe and that they're bottled correctly and that they're t testing safety protocols. Done. Um, also in the acute phase, which I forgot, we also want to add um, choline citrate. Choline citrate is then what upregulates or provides exogenous uh, choline in the body to protect the brain. Our whole goal is to protect the brain, and this is something that can be utilized. I talked to Dr. Martin Gordon myself. He says to use it, so we're going to use it. Um, we don't want these Alzheimer's drugs that, like, have a choline sparing activity, something weird. I don't know why you would do that. It's strange. Um, just because you're sparing choline doesn't mean you have enough. So I, I don't get it. It's just it's this weird big pharma concept. I don't know why you would do this. Um, but we're gonna we're gonna add exogenous choline citrate. We want as much choline in the body as possible. Um, once this process has you know gone on, say for one to six months. Um, we're going to be increasing dosages. We want to increase the dosages to the highest 
possible levels that we can that are tolerated. So from six months to a year, two years to five years, I say our one to five year plan is to go to max dosages for all the medications possible. You'll never hear a doctor say this, but that's what we should do. Um, why a doctor will never say this is because, well, <laughs> there are rules and laws and guidelines around dosing medications, and there's processes in the way that you do this. Um, but the safe way to do it is we just spend a year to five years over time and just increase it to all the guidelines state symptom resolution. So we're going to focus on symptom resolution and optimization and full quality of life as you possibly can get. Um, if you ever read any dosing stuff for doctors and things like that, it'll never say, you know, dose testosterone from 100 milligrams to 200 milligrams over, you know, six months and then go from um, 200 to 650 over the course of five years. They'll never say that. And that's just due to the fact that we don't have dosing studies and we don't have anything that says, okay, here's the dose. Well, there's not many drugs that have that. So um, this is a natural compound that's in your body and your uh, blood levels are gonna tell you what's wrong and that you should or shouldn't be taking that medication at that dose. It's just gonna say it. Um, your blood pressure or other markers are going to be raised in a way that's going to tell a doctor, okay, I've given you this amount of medication, it's doing the right thing, or it's not doing the right thing. Any doctor knows that. So, we're optimizing everything to the highest possible doses that we can go to to achieve full quality of life and stability of a patient. Um, something I forgot is post-surgery, we want oxandrolone medication to be applied. Because um, you don't want to be screwing with testosterone just immediately after a an illness in, in the sense that if it's not too low after the initial injury, you still would want to at least try to give you something that's going to help you heal. So after our injury, um, the ER visit, for the next five days until our blood labs come back, um, we wanna add oxandrolone for the next month so that we can upregulate all the good things that oxandrolone does. Oxandrolone, the common name is Anivar, and this is a medication that's a post-operative surgery medication. They use this in burn pits or burn patients all the time. Every burn patient gets this medication. Now your standard ER doc doesn't know about it because, well, he's just not educated. And also they may not be a DO. They may, may just not have as much orthopedic knowledge. And even either ortho doctors don't even know about this stuff either because they're just uneducated and they just don't look. Um, this, this medication is the one medication that every patient can take pretty much and it's gonna help you recover. So what do we wanna do? Recover and we wanna add bone density. We want to upregulate testosterone. We wanna upregulate dihydric testosterone to go into the cells and start cleaning stuff up and working and help you heal faster. You know, you can't give somebody Tylenol or morphine, it's gonna help you heal faster, sort of, with the inflammation process, but it's not just gonna help you heal faster. Oxandrolone helps you heal faster. It's what the drug was designed to do. The guy needs a Nobel Peace Prize for inventing this drug because it literally saves lives. So we want to add that drug, and I say, you know, for the next six months. So even while you're you're optimizing testosterone and stuff like that, this is a, a fringe theory, but I, you know, my personal opinion is that we want to, while we're optimizing after that first couple of weeks of, of uh um, the patient um, that we want to be optimizing and then you know have your, your Anivar on that and do that for the next six months and I say do it year round for TBI patients. No doc will ever say this in their entire lives and anybody who even would say it will will deny their own opinion. Um, I'm saying this because it's a safe drug, doesn't have any crazy side effects, doesn't like screw up your liver and doesn't have any major problems that other drugs have. So year round oxandrolone for TBI patients and this is you know if you're having a bad day and you don't want to get out of your bed you you give someone oxandrolone they're gonna be doing stuff they're gonna at least be healing at least be able to like lay down like be physically active or something even sitting there or they're gonna get up out of bed they're gonna start doing stuff because it gives you energy and it gives you this drive that you need as a TBI patient you know, even the docs even talk about this stuff, they probably used it once maybe. But if you're a TBI patient and you take this stuff, 
it's going to help you feel good. And it doesn't have any major crashes or anything like that. So it's a very positive medication. And it's something I personally use in physical therapy. So it's my frontline personal physical therapy drug that I use to get through four months of physical therapy for my leg. Um, when I had to go through PT to rehab from a surgery that I had from my TBI. So it's a drug that works, it's safe, it doesn't cause any crazy side effects. So our acute phase, ketamine, progesterone administration with ALA, magnesium, and 15, milligram, uh, 15 grams of fish oil. This is our standard cocktail Stop the inflammation process to heal the body. We then do a five IVs of ketamine over the course of that week in an outpatient format or inpatient if you're still in the hospital um, to then reduce all the inflammation. We're still adding in magnesium and ALA and fish oil. We're still doing that treatment. We can then run IV peptides to then upregulate the immune system with uh, thymus and alpha-1. We've ran our blood tests. We've started on the process of optimizing hormones because we're using an expert in hormones. We're not using the endocrinologist or the urologist that just happens to get you or something like that. No, we're using a hormone expert that's doing outpatient optimization. So we're calling up um, Dr. Warren Gordon himself or uh, Dr. Eric Fetty, um, Dr. Bradford Garner, Dr. Uh, Gabe Frank, I'm Dr. Ryan Rhodes. We're optimizing all the hormones in, if you're even inside the hospital, we're doing it inside the hospital, from the hospital bed. We're doing a telemedicine call, they're intervening, they're getting your, your blood ran, they're doing the, you're, you're doing your optimization in the hospital if you have to, or your first outpatient uh, uh, appointment, and uh, uh, advocate or a family member will help set that up um, to do a telemedicine call with the doc while you're recovering. You're getting the blood done. If you call your EMTs to get the blood, well then you call down your EMT squad, they'll come down and they'll they'll get the blood for you. Or if it's a a, uh, a contract nurse, you pay them 50 bucks, they'll come to the house or, or you set it up through the lab core request. There's ways to get this done if someone can't get out of bed. So you get the person, you get the blood ran, you're working with the doc, you're optimizing all these things. You're working on a post-operative plan or you know post-acute injury plan. Um, you're then even continuing ketamine infusions once a month or or whatnot um, to lower and maintain the inflammation process being lowered. You're um, utilizing Anavar to its fullest potential. The, I think max dosing in men is probably like. 30 to 50 milligrams uh, per per day, which is pretty hefty. You're feeling really good if you're on if you're on 50. I'll tell you what, that, that works really good. You're focusing in on the other aspects that are not being um, optimized, and um, we're focusing on a total health plan and that includes diet I am not the kind of person who's on the keto carnivore craze in terms of TBI and why I say this is because we don't know and there's no long-term studies so I will say low no sugar and moderate carbohydrate 50 milligram or 50 grams around there probably lower but 50 50 I think is safe I think it's just good um, and uh, high nutrient density foods, so liver, kidney, um, that sort of thing. It's going to give you as much nutrients as possible. Um, and if you don't like it, you can mix it in with like deer meat or bison or other types of ground meat or something like that. You mix it all up and you don't even notice it. You, you only need like an ounce a day anyway, so you don't even need a lot of it. So um, adding those things for micronutrients and then working on a physical therapy plan with a doc, um, with I, ideally a doctor of physical therapy who knows what they're doing, um, or a, a physical therapist, a master's of physical therapy um, practitioner who know they've been doing this for a long time and they know what they're doing. Um, 
Important note, TBI is not found in an MRI or a CT scan. Um, your neurologist will try to fake you, try to say, oh, we're going to do an MRI. Okay, if you got a cranial injury, okay, sure, you'll find it. But, you know, not, I think the latest data I saw is 11% TBI patients have anything on an MRI. Okay, so what? You know, I have, I'm a non-functioning pituitary. Everybody told me I was fine. I went to get a glucagon simulation test. Turned out I had 0% growth hormone. I was going to die. Okay, these neurologists are bullshit. It's, it's my opinion. Okay, they're great at imagery. They find something in imagery. They can solve it. They can get you referred to like a, a brain surgeon that can go work on stuff. But if there's nothing on a brain scan, the only tool they have is a psoriasis and dangerous psychotropic drugs. We don't use those because we don't want to upregulate GABA. So the opposite is that we're using ketamine, which doesn't do that and works on the NMDA receptor, which then just lowers inflammation and lowers all the processes. So we want to screw with psych drugs. Psych drugs are contraindicated in TBI patients because they work on processes that we don't want to stop. We want to maintain our physiological processes the way that works through ketamine and just other medications that work passively and not actively through GABA. Um, that's the main concept. So ketamine, hormones, peptides, um, optimize, utilizing oxandrolone, full process, we have a full plan, we've got our physical therapy, and if a patient needs help, right, if you're working a job, you're the only person, you're caring for this person, um, you need to get your ROTC involved, you need to get your uh, church involved, you need to get your doctor of physical therapy program involved, or the EMT uh, program, or the nursing program, and you need to get interns to come in and help out. Um, this is something that you create, um, and if all else fails, you can't talk, nobody's gonna help you, talk to your congressman, say, hey, I need a volunteer. They've got veterans who work for them. They've got other people that you know, help out and whatnot, and they can get you someone to help out. Um, then off to the Brain Injury Association, like the CT Foundation, which, okay, they exist. They might be able to refer you to different places, but you're already working with an expert anyways. So you're already working with somebody that's optimizing you because you're already working with the docs that I'm gonna give you. So you already got a plan. Um, you're not chugging through and like trying to scrape away these big hospital institutions fuck them they're not they're not helpful all they do is brain surgeries and gunshot wounds that's what they're good for that's what they're great for like fixing cranial stuff right they do not do tbi optimization and full body full spectrum healing that's not their job their job is to do gunshots big big joint stuff like you have to understand what they're made for they're not made for tbi just because it is the most prevalent injury doesn't mean it's the one they know about. Um, so I hope that this gives you an idea. This is a plan. It's a plan that works and it's a plan that's backed up by science and it's not made up. It's something that actually can provide you positive quality of life and then you don't have to keep going to neurologist every week and going to this guy and that guy and this person um, and then dealing with some psych person who's gonna evaluate you like no we're not doing observation we're doing real science real science is always backed up by labs if you don't got labs you don't have real science you don't have testing you don't have real science so that's the whole point of this we want a scientific method we apply it to tbi and we utilize it to our advantage um I will put some links of doctors that you can contact, but the main docs are um, Dr. Mark Gordon, Dr. Eric Fetty, Dr. Tamara Wexler, Dr. Bradford Garner, Dr. Gabe Frank, I think Nurse Prack Gil Tal is a Nurse Prack, I think. Um, he runs Elevate Men's Health in the Carolinas in New Jersey. Um, let's see, Dr. Keith Nichols, uh, Tier 1 Health and Wellness, um, the Illinois Alternative Medicine folks, Dr. Joe, Dr. Joe Carter, I think is his last name, sorry I'm forgetting this, my TBI kicking in, uh, Spiral Rejuvenation, they're in, um, Orlando and Pittsburgh, every single one of these doctors does telemedicine. Do not worry about where they're located. Your job is to get an appointment with these docs. The first, um, the first thing that you do while they're in the ER is you call up these doctors immediately. Your job is to get 
the lab set up and to get the process going um, for this person. Because what's gonna happen? They're gonna come out of the ER, they're gonna give them whatever they give them, and they're gonna, you know, these ER docs just do the immediate stuff, right? They do not do the main TBI stuff that we need to do. And um, also for the ketamine infusions, if you can get this set up with the anesthesiology department, if they're smart enough and they understand your concept, try to do it with them while this is inpatient so that they can stay in the hospital and do these processes. But if not, then your goal is to get with the anesthesiology department to do this on an outpatient basis with their team, or then have their anesthesiology department get you connected with a local ketamine clinic who's then going to do ketamine infusions. And this is not something that you can just do on your own. This takes a team. There's a method to the madness. This is regular anesthesiology. And so this requires a nurse anesthetist and some other staff to do this work. So you need a real team to do this. Um, they're going to get this set up for you. And then with your doctor of physical therapy um, or physical therapy person, um, and to have a whole full-blown plan. So I hope this is a good method that will help you and that will give you ammunition. Because our whole goal is full optimization and total health. It's not just take lithium and get out of my office or take SSRIs, get out of my office or keep going to brain scans which don't show anything. It's not how this works. It's an inflammation process. You stop the inflammation process, you optimize the hormones, you heal. That's the goal. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. Please check out TRT for Warriors group on Facebook. And you guys have a great day.